Hey guys, <laughs> we're alive and I'm still thinking, oh, I need a towel. Um, we are gonna make caramel tonight. So happy Sunday. I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. David's grabbing some hand towels. I have to fold some. I washed a big load. I am cooking like crazy around here these days. I probably some of you guys are too with everybody home um, being quarantined. And I think I did a laundry load of almost all like hand towels. <laughs> I did, I haven't folded them, they're in the dryer, but I did them. So we're gonna make caramel sauce today. And one of the reasons I started making caramel sauce is because it is a David Yummy. favorite. Yeah, it's a David favorite, not a Grace <laughs> favorite this time, so she doesn't mind it. And when I made it for, I made it the first time, I said, Jonathan, will you try this? And Jonathan said, oh, it tastes like caramel. <laughs> so that was probably like the biggest compliment I can get from the 13 year old. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna, we've got a lot to talk about. We're gonna, um, oh, look at the hearts and stuff. I love it. Thank you guys. Um, so I've made, I've got a cheat sheet here, so I don't remember anything, but we got a lot to talk about. We're gonna start the caramel right away because it has to simmer a while, and I can fill you in on all the updates while we're doing that. Um, first of all, let me remind you, we did church this morning on the sofa in our pajamas. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> did. David calls them clojamas. David and uh, Kristen Parker decided they're clojamas because they're kind of clothes or jamas. CJs. CJs. And actually, wearing, it's jamas. Jamas. Clojamas. Because we jam in our jamas. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you have to put up with this bad jokes. <laughs> oh, you're getting hard. Jamas. Look at it. See, they were not bad jokes. They're not bad jokes. Anyway, you're CJs. I like that better. I call them clojamas. <laughs> Clojamas. Clojamas. Because we jam it. Clojamas. <laughs> we'll take that up later. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start the sauce. I can give you an update. But when we were watching church on the sofa in our CJs this morning, um, you don't tell the pastor, but um, we were in CJs. <laughs> but hit the share button. They told us, the youth pastor said, hit the share button. And it's so true. Hey, Lance, he's watching. Um, I see all these great faces, all these familiar names popping up that they're watching us. Thank you, guys. Uh, Johnny Perlison's watching and Kate. Uh, one of our moderators from Big Group, and Mary Bridgie's on. But anyway, um, hit the share button. If somebody especially would share the video, so when you're watching, hit the share button um, so that people in the Big Group will see it because people in the Big Group can't always find it. The Low Carb Journey to Health, they can't always find it. So if you'll hit the share, we'll be sure that they can follow it. So let's start this and we'll talk through the other stuff about what's going on. You guys can tell us what's going on with you too. So I've got this new toy and it's a little loud. I'm just going to be honest. It's louder. I just opened it. Literally, we took it out of the box 30, 45 minutes ago. So it's a little loud. It rejected my favorite pot. And y'all, my favorite pot has lost its little top. <laughs> and so this won't work on it. And it's lost the top. And I started looking to order a new one. I love the copper bottom. And David's like, no, I'll fix it. But I've been a little using epoxy it. will be fine. I've been using it like this for like four days now. But anyway, we're going to use this pan, and I'll have to tip it forward so you can see it. Ooh, I just turned it on. This thing is really sensitive. It's a little loud. I'm going to put it on the minimum heat, if I can figure it out. I'm going to put it on the minimum heat because it gets hot really fast. It's an induction burner. I used one of this for the cooking, the Cheeto class, the live class we did. Um, but I haven't used this. I did boil water just to see what the temperature would do. I'm starting with four tablespoons of butter, and don't worry, the recipe will be on the website, Cooking Keto with Christy, um, sometime tomorrow. I'm not going to make any promises. Is the I'm caramel ready doing. yet? It's not ready yet. Oh. Four tablespoons of butter, which is the same as two ounces, so it's literally half a stick of it, and it's unsalted butter. Unsalted. Okay, why do you use unsalted? Um, so you can Bam. put the salt in it later. <laughs> well, exactly. So you can adjust the salt because the salt content varies a lot by different brands. He's heard me fuss he about that. So use the unsalted, oh look at all the hearts, use the unsalted so that you can um, add your own. And I just put everything in here together, y'all. So four tablespoons or two ounces of butter, unsalted butter. This is a half cup of heavy cream. I am using my precious cream. <laughs> I've been so our, nervous. Our, our, our coronavirus cream is running out. Uh, yeah, I've been nervous about my stockpile. And when I, David had committed to us making it, and this afternoon I'm like, oh, we're going to have to use our cream. We don't have much. <laughs> okay, so the cream and the butter are in there. And then you put the sweetener. Now, let's talk about the sweetener, because some of you guys started asking me as soon as I posted we were going to do this. Do you want to use a half cup of sweetener? Now, most often I use my beloved 
Suprin, S-U-K-R-I-N, I love it. It's a blend of erythritol and stevia, or erythritol and milk fruit. But erythritol, when it cools, will get grainy. So there's two times when I don't want to use erythritol. I don't, I don't like to use it with ice cream because it'll make your ice cream hard as a brick. And I don't like to use it in my caramel sauce or my chocolate sauce, which I'll be sharing that recipe to eventually. But anyway, so I'm going to use a mixture. I'm going to use a quarter cup of xylitol. Now, xylitol is toxic to pets. So this is something when I use xylitol, I have to be super, super careful. But I'm using a quarter cup of that. I'm using a quarter cup of allulose, A-L-L-U-L-O-S-E. And honestly, allulose tends to work regardless of the brand. Some of you asked what brand I use. Um, right tonight I'm using the Hoosier Farm, H-O-O-S-I-E-R, the Hoosier Farm brand. Honestly, I haven't been able to tell a difference. I've also ordered from Keystone. Um, I tend to go with what's least expensive. Uh, unlike other sweeteners, there's not a lot of variation in the amount of sweetener. I know you're like, David's like really bored by this. Is but it bitter? Not bitter. What do you think? I mean, it's ne I've never noticed it being bitter, but I've tried some of that stevia in my coffee and oof. David had a bad experience with stevia, that's why I guess, is it bitter? I think he put too much. But anyway, <laughs> if you can't have xylitol, you can do all oligolose. You can do all erythritol, but don't be mad at me when it's grainy. And it won't be grainy as long as it's warm. So if you put it in the fridge and it gets grainy, just warm it up. Um, and then once you warm it, the graininess generally goes away. So we got that out of the way. Everybody's straight on sweetener. I'm trying to catch questions, but, but yeah, the whole idea is use either a half cup of whatever sweetener you prefer. Just know that erythritol, when it cools, will be grainy. I'm using a combination quarter cup xylitol, quarter cup allulose, but you use your preference. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Is it ready? No. Hush. <laughs> We've been at home too much together. So this has got to come to... One weekend. One weekend. This has got to come to a simmer. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Can you guys see it? It's just the butter's melting, the sweetener's in there. And what I want it to do is I want it to get warm and come to a really low simmer. Um, and this is still my my um, recipe. You can see it's still like all these notes. It's not even really official. So if powdered, you, could, you could use powder, but it's still, if it's erythritol, it's still going to get grainy when it cools. What about if you can't use xylitol? What if you, can you use all allulose? You can use all allulose. The xylitol browns better than allulose. Allulose doesn't really brown, and allulose keeps things really soft. So you get more of that caramely, uh, sticky texture using this mixture of xylitol and allulose. But if you don't want to use xylitol, certainly use all allulose. You can use um, all erythritol, but again, as it cools, it's going to be gritty. But and just I, warm it up and it gets ungritty. Warm it up and it gets ungritty. And you can warm it in the microwave or warm it just in um, a pan of hot water. We'll talk about that too. I'm going to stir in about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Here's my cute little salt jar. How much? You said an eighth of a teaspoon of salt? Eighth of a teaspoon. Eighth, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> David knows people are asking. And this will be on my website, so you don't have to write everything down. Um, Jenny and Jai take care of the website for me. <laughs> They're awesome. They knew this was coming. They knew I'd be sending to everything at the last minute. Um, so I'm letting this kind of come to a simmer. The other stuff I'll wait until this goes. So what we're doing is we're going to try this. I'm going to turn it up just another notch, and then I'm going to be panicked because it's too hot. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so if you're following along at home, it's just milk, butter, sweetener, salt. Milk, butter, sweetener. Ah, cream. Oh, cream. Don't forget the cream. Cream. No, How much not cream? Not milk. Not milk. It's all cream. <laughs> Why is you you're going to get milk? you're going to get kicked out I'm of this get room. In trouble. You are. Your moderator's going to kick you out. Half cup of cream. <laughs> Four tablespoons butter. Half cup of sweetener. If you can't use xylitol, use all allulose. If you want to use all erythritol, you can, but it will be gritty. They're laughing. See, they're laughing at me. But anyway, I want this to come to a simmer, so we're going to keep an eye on it. It is getting warm because the butter's melting. And oh, by the way, I like to use a wooden spoon because the wooden spoon, um, I don't know why. I mean, you could use a whisk, but I don't know, just something about caramel on a wooden spoon. I can't explain it. You'll see why it matters later because we're going to want to see the thickness, how thick it gets a little bit later. So, um, you didn't realize that was a what? A counter? Until you pasted? I, I don't understand that comment. Sorry, I'm trying I to see the comments. I can, uh, but anyway. I didn't realize that was a counter until you pasted. Yeah, I don't know if you She's guys She's replying to someone. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. 
But anyway, so we're going to let this summer. And I want to talk about, oh, uh, two things first. Happy birthday to Brody. Brody is 17. Brody is Kristen Parker's son. Kristen's our admin extraordinaire, and they're in Hawaii. And so he had a blessing. He had a 17th birthday locked down in quarantine. What a way to celebrate your birthday. Um, so, okay. Yeah, there's about 300 people. Somebody asked me, want to know how many were watching? About 300, it looks like. Okay, so that's going to start the summer soon. Starting to steam a little. Let's talk about March Madness. <laughs> what March Madness? <laughs> madness we're living the madness, in. The madness in here in the house? <laughs> the madness we're living in. Um, so normally March Madness refers to basketball, right? Yes. Yeah. So here we are. NC State basketball. Yeah. It drives me mad. Because <laughs> they're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So March Madness, I think this year, is like a whole different connotation. The whole March Madness thing is, um, well, we're all like stuck inside, trying not to go mad, and for good reason, for good reason. We're inside because we're trying to, um, sorry, it's like really boiling, and you don't wanna burn it, so do keep an eye on it, so I'm trying to get back down. But we're all inside because we're trying to blunt the spike or blunt the curve, Lower the curve. flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. Um, for people getting sick because we know that from looking at other countries that the whole COVID-19 can be pretty traumatic, pretty dramatic. But anyway, so we're all at home and we have been, the kids, if you've seen me, I've been posting daily updates in the group, day one, day two, day three, day four. And um, it's been me in the kids' home this past week. Well, David is joining us tomorrow in our little work from home uh, scenario. So he'll be working. Uh, Lance says I need to make some tonight. No, oh, ice cream uh, pairs well with caramel. Lance is right, ice cream does pair with caramel. But anyway, so David's going to make some tonight. tonight. Yeah. Ice cream? Mm -hmm. We already have some of the things. Oh, good. <laughs> They're so spoiled. <laughs> but anyway, um, and this has to cool, so you can't eat it right away. But anyway, so March Madness is we're all home trying to survive. And so what we've done this week is we started trying to stake out, like tonight at dinner, we were talking about, like, What's your schedule tomorrow? So Grace has classes like 8.45 until like noon. David has a conference call. I'm on a call at Stockholm in the morning. So all of this is kind of plotting out like what time are we gonna get up and get going? And who's working where? Um, because he's loud on call. And, <laughs> and Grace will be in her room, I know that. But anyway, so we were trying to sort out where we're all gonna be and then of course the dogs will be running in between us. So we'll see how this next week goes. And the funny thing is, like every when we do dinner, when we have meals together, we say the blessing. <laughs> and we used to all hold hands when we're saying the blessing. And for this past week, we've been doing mm -hmm. jazz hands while we're saying the blessing. I well, thought it was our version of Wi-Fi. I do this. <laughs> they, they do this. So anyway, but everybody's kind of doing this, and we don't hold hands it's during electric. the blessing. So that's part of our March Madness. But another part of March Madness is um, so usually there are basketball brackets. Right? Do you know how that works? <laughs> is, it, is it like gambling? Because well, my grandmother wouldn't allow gambling. Well, you can certainly gamble. Like you bet on it? Yeah, you can bet on it, yeah, sure. So are you going to the boogie man? For but that? you don't have to. The brackets, you know, you don't have to gamble. You don't have to bet on your brackets. Well, and David doesn't even know about this. But um, in the group, in the big group, we'll call Drain the Help, Cook and Keto Christy, Sunny Ray, and Sunny's there. Sunny Ray, um, what she say? It's, no, it's Sunnin. It is Sunnin. I think that's what she said. But anyway, to begin one. But anyway, we do the brackets, and Sunny Ray has created these really cool brackets based on recipes. Woo! Isn't that cool? So in the first, <laughs> he's making fun, y'all. I thought he was being serious. So, so the first bracket, and I don't remember the recipes because Sunny Ray did all this. She is awesome. But there's four brackets, and so like there's two recipes up against each other, and then like there'll be like people will fix them and they'll vote for uh. what they like best. Like maybe it's the cheddar broccoli soup versus the no noodle soup. Maybe that's, and then they vote for which like the and there's a winner. And then there's a winner in this one, and a winner here, and a winner here, and then these two winners go against each other. Oh. Right? And so it'll be a few weeks. We'll get into April Madness. But anyway, we're going to have a March Madness. And I don't know I don't know if you can bet on that or not. But oh, 
call there it There might bookie. be a bookie in Las Vegas <laughs> that'll take those. Guys, what's happening is it's starting to brown. It is foamy, and the foaminess scent tends to vary with the butter. I used a less expensive um, thing of butter. You know, it's, it's a quarantine, you <laughs> And so it gets a bit foamy, and you can scrape that off toward the end, but let it go. This is exactly what it should be doing. And it went from kind of that yellow color, I hope you can see it. It went from kind of that yellow color to being brown. Hush. It's mad. It's mad at me. But anyway, so we're going to let that simmer and continue to darken. And by the way, if you're setting a timer, once it really starts to simmer, you're going to let it go anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Now, yes, it can be done in 10 minutes, and it's going to be pourable when it, after it cools. If you let it go to 15 minutes, it's going to be super, super thick, which is my favorite. Yeah, David's favorite. So, and I'll show you what we have in terms of the end. I'll get to that in just a minute. Who is your question? I don't think so. They're chatting with Sunny Ray, telling her how great she is, which that's she really is. a cool thing she for her, really her to have done. It's a very cool thing. So either she'll post it or I'll post it. Somebody will post it tonight. Um, after we finish up here, we'll be in the big group. And so you can look at the bracket and choose what you want to make. And it can be if you've made it before. But um, she's going to ask people to post pictures. And um, then I think the voting is going to be on Fridays. Sunny Ray knows all the rules. Um, call the bookie, see if you can get that set up. And, <laughs> and but Sunny knows all the rules. And so it's like eight recipes, so four brackets. Then it goes to three, and then two, and then one. Is that right? No, it can't be right. <laughs> Oh, it goes to two. I don't know brackets. I don't do that. Anyway, Sunny Ray will explain it, not Christy. <laughs> so. What else have we been doing? <laughs> um, this weekend, we started our little herb and vegetable garden. They're laughing at me because I don't know what it is. He's laughing at me too. It reminds me of the blueberry muffin blooper, but we won't I'm talk about so, that. I am, no, we won't. I am so busy cooking and being on Facebook, like I don't watch stuff like that. But anyway, like I said, set a timer. You don't need to keep stirring it, but just kind of keep an eye on it because it'll get darker and darker. When it starts to get the color of caramel that you love, turn off the heat, let it cool completely, and you'll see how thick it is. Yeah, somebody's well, type, or somebody's written it up. Thank well, you guys when, for doing when that. When do you put the almond or the vanilla in? It's not almond. It's maple and vanilla. Oh, maple. I think it after you take it toward the very, very end. Oh, okay. But um, so the next thing I wanted to tell you guys was so herbs and veggies. So I got some cilantro. You know, I love cilantro. Sweet basil. I haven't had a lot of luck with it. Sweet basil. If anybody needs basil, I've got, not only do I have like five plants now because I've been dividing it, but I cut some off and rooted it in water. And I think Grace was going to plant those. Grace has been helping with that. She really is into plants and stuff now. So she's doing She's got a green thumb. Yeah, she's been a really She used plant. to kill every plant and now she's growing every plant. So. Yeah, so really go, Gracie? And we've got broccoli and cabbage. And peppers, lots of different peppers. I got you jalapeno peppers. Cool. Or hot. Yeah, and I got um, tomatoes. tomatoes. A little baby tomatoes, rotted tomatoes, and then the, the big old ones. Um, okay, this is getting a nice color, guys. I don't know if you can see it. You want to. Um, you'll see it start to thicken. And it's hot. Like, really be careful. But you can take your finger, and you'll see it really start to stick to the back of the spoon. So this is where you're using the wooden, wooden spoon. Is helpful and the wood doesn't lower the temperature in the pot the way a metal spoon would so that's another thing to remember is there a question not yet they're trying to get the ingredients so you might want to remind everyone <laughs> what the ingredients are. one half cup of heavy cream four tablespoons or two ounces of unsalted butter so you can add the salt later um, one half cup of granulated sweetener I am using a quarter cup of allulose and a quarter cup of xylitol Again, the brand doesn't matter so much. If you can't use xylitol, use all oilers. If you don't love either of those, you can use erythritol, but as it cools, it will, be, it will be grainy. You can heat it back up to avoid that. And then I'm, oh, I oh added an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and I am gonna put in some vanilla extract. I like to use just a half teaspoon of that, and I like to use maple extract. You don't have to do this, but the maple, seems to give it just a richer flavor mm -hmm. and i i can't explain it but I, I like it in there and remember all yellows is not as sweet as erythritol or erythritol and stevia blends you can't use straight stevia you need to use either erythritol allulose or xylitol because it does brown it 
caramelize. This is what's happening as this gets a darker color. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's looking, it's getting it's, close to the right color. Yeah. Still got to go a little longer. So I interrupted you about your veggies. So what are you going to do with sweet basil? <laughs> Sweet basil is fantastic, just putting it in salads, like chopping some up. I love to make caprese salad with it. Grace and I both really enjoy that with some fresh mozzarella, some balsamic vinegar, some uh, tomato. I mean, I'm growing tomato and basil. I at least look at a cow, so I can make my own mozzarella <laughs> Make your own cream. Cheese. Then I'll have caprese salad all the time. But anyway, caprese salad, mm, that's one of my favorites. Um, anything Italian, put it on pizza. Um, pesto. I made a ton of pesto with basil at the end of the season last year. We made pesto with traditional with pine nuts, with roasted pecans, with walnuts, with macadamia nuts. I think the roasted pecan pesto and the macadamia nut were my favorite. Okay, so this is getting it's getting there, y'all. There we go. And you can see it's starting to get thicker, and you'll see it starting to coat the back of the screen. That's hot. <laughs> it's hot. It smells kind of like cream Ooh. that's getting warm. So, remember that after you take it off the heat, it will thicken a bit more. They're asking, what does it smell like? Mm, caramel? Well, no, at this point, it really doesn't smell like caramel. It, it smells does. more like butter. Okay, warm butter. Yeah, it smells more like butter. But um, let me show you. So, uh, it freezes beautifully, guys. It freezes really, really well. So this is a jar, this is about a six ounce jar. And so I had it in the freezer and they had okay caps for freezing. Honestly, probably not ideal, it's this little plastic cap. But I had that in the freezer because I'd make it and I'd send some to Grace. And so I had, this is the only one I could find. And I was making this like quadrupling the recipe. And so I can't remember exactly how much this makes. It's really getting thick now. But the longer you let it simmer, in fact, you could probably turn it off and it'd be done. But the longer it simmers, the thicker it gets. And this, let me get a little stir, there's a little butter flooding on the top because this came out of the freezer today. But look at this. Look how thick and gooey it is. And it's been sitting on the counter, what, for a couple hours? If it was in the fridge, it would be even thicker. You see? <laughs> I do see. <laughs> Y'all see? Ah! Oh, so. <laughs> oh, he's abusing me on Facebook Live. Oh, thank you. I guess I will. <laughs> but it is good on, imagine mm -hmm. like a little swath on pancakes, imagine on ice cream, on the waffles, put it on some waffles. Mm. It's also great in coffee. Just put a little dollop in, isn't it good? It's also good by itself. Sandra. On your phone. <laughs> That'd be bad. It is also good by itself. And I imagine it would be a little bit of a fat ball um, because Heather's like, oh my gosh, everybody's going, OMG, OMG. Um, <laughs> I guess we really can't share a spoon, can we? We can't share a spoon. The government that's would why not be happy. I have three more. <laughs> <laughs> the kids have said they weren't going to join us, but I knew when I brought up the caramel. They might change their minds. Isn't it fantastic? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know how long this has been going. Not how long we've been talking. It feels like forever, probably for everybody else too. But you can see it's getting a little thicker. I like it to go until it's truly like thick, like clinging to the back of the spoon, and that gives you a richer taste. Like I said, at this point, and I've timed it, but I've timed it doubling or quadrupling the batch, and I need to time it again with just the single batch. Um, but honestly, it takes, my last notes were 15 to 18 minutes once it comes to a simmer. So after mm -hmm. it starts to low simmer, 15 to 18 minutes. And this, honestly, I think it went closer to 20 or 21. Don't be afraid to let it go further. Like I've actually made it and put it in the fridge and it brought it out and it was like caramel candy, like mm -hmm. almost a taffy. Do you remember that? I do. So, so whenever you turn it off, it's still going to be somewhat liquidy, right? Um, yes. It's not going to be that thick when you turn it off. No, no, no. When you turn it off right away, it won't be that thick. But um, here we go. We tease you guys with it. It won't be that thick when you turn it off the stove, but it will get that thick um, after it sets up. And then after it cools, can you see it? After it cools, you can put it in the fridge. So somebody's going to fuss at me for teasing you with that. Can you that? Well, you redeemed yourself. <laughs> 
the spoon is clean. So let me make sure I've told everybody. Oh, so I need to tell you. So March Madness, the um, brackets will be in the group, so you can see that. Oh uh, yeah, Brett's commenting. Brett said he loved the jar he bought. I actually had this with me at an event in Raleigh and adapted it and sold it. People asked me to sell it. And so I went and we sold it. And Jonathan was there, he was selling it. I actually took some of the chocolate sauce and sold that too. And people loved it. Bootsy, are you watching? Bootsy Dolls. She bought like three or four jars and it was so much fun. She, I think, really loved it. One lady said, my husband bought four jars, can I freeze it? And I'm like, you can freeze it. I've been freezing it for Gracie. And my favorite thing to freeze it in, by the way, are these little four ounce jars, because it's really rich, like a little goes a long way. And so if you buy these little four ounce jars, you can fill two or three of them. Um, it does get expensive to make, because the xylitol and the allulose are pretty expensive. This is thickening up. Bootsy is watching. Is she watching? Bootsy says, yes. And Bootsy has asked me, that event was like in October, and she has asked me once a week since October 2019 for this recipe. And I felt so bad. I've been so busy trying to finish stuff up. But anyway, I love these little four, four ounce canning jars. I can't say it. I like these little four ounce canning jars because I put it in that and put it in the freezer. And I put my pate in this, the chicken and uh, that you love. The chicken liver and bacon pate, he would not touch unless he was starving. I'm thinking by the end of the quarantine, it might start looking good to him. I put my pesto in this, and uh, there she is. She's what <laughs> She says, I'm watching and I'm excited for this recipe. But I'm glad you're watching, Bootsy. But anyway, uh, put the top on it and put it in the freezer. And pesto, this will keep pesto, it'll keep pate, it'll keep caramel sauce, it'll keep chocolate sauce. I've got chocolate sauce in the freezer. Did you know that? And it'll keep um, spices. That's what's in this is rib rub. So it'll keep spices um, that you make. The ranch dressing mix, all those spices. All right, we're getting there. If you guys can see. Yeah, I can't see it's, what it's you still can a little see. light, but oop, it's mad it's again. again. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to say in about, like I said, I can take it off now. And because it's, see how it's coating the back. But I'm going to let it go at least another three, four, five minutes because we like it that thick. Mm -hmm. If you want it this thick, let it go until it's this color. <laughs> so once this, <laughs> once it's this color, then you can take it off the heat. So the color is really a great, great way to judge. <laughs> you mean it remind me of Winston doing that? <laughs> Winston Bay. If I can start tree. howling like he um, does. I, there was a question and I didn't catch it. So I Can apologize. you use baby jars? Can you, um, you probably could. Anything as that long would as it's seal. Mm -hmm. Anything that would seal. Remember, you're going to keep it in the fridge or freezer. It'll stay in the fridge for at least two to three weeks in the fridge. Um, in the freezer, well, I've had some of this since like Christmas time because I made some at Christmas and gave it away. Um, okay, so last thing I need to tell you about why, and this is getting really close. Holy cow, the color so much better. See how dark it's getting? I hope, these, I hope they can see it. Um, but anyway, um, Diet Doctor, I want to tell you about that. I've, been, I've mentioned being busy. And Diet Doctor has some fantastic resources about the coronavirus. So Dr. Shear, our cardiologist who's out in California, literally in the hot zone, I think. Um, I think he's quarantined himself at home, right? I hope he has. But anyway, Dr. Shear wrote a piece about immunity. And what I, we suspect is happening, and I've been really sad because the groups, both the groups have been kind of low in terms of interaction. And I think people are just getting so stressed that they're just saying, what the heck, I'm going to eat whatever. And Dr. Shear makes this fantastic point that if you want to boost your immunity, I mean, you can take all the vitamin C and all the like herbal stuff that's being recommended online, but if you really want to boost your, your um, immunity, eating right is one of the best things that you can do. We know for a fact that there's a much higher mortality rate, that's death y'all, mortality, for those who have diabetes, who have cardiovascular disease, or have high blood pressure when it comes to COVID-19. So if you can manage your blood glucose during this very, very difficult time, and it is difficult for all of us, I promise, but if you can manage your blood glucose, you're putting yourself in a much healthier place. But don't take my word for it. Read about immunity. I'll post that link from Dr. Shear. It's fantastic. Um, another fantastic resource on the website is Ann Mullins wrote a piece about prepping, like what you want to stock in your fridge, freezer, pantry if it's not too late to stock. But then Jill and I, Jill who's head of recipes, we spent some time together last week 
putting together this really comprehensive guide. Um, and it's called, we call it the Stay at Home Collection. And it's for those times when you can't get out, it's using up those staples, the staples that you would have in your pantry or your freezer. And we even talk about how to freeze things, like how to freeze it. We talk about making compound butter. We talk about getting in your spice drawer and using up some of your spices. But that recipe collection is huge. And we covered, we covered everything, y'all. I mean, we, <laughs> I can't imagine anything we left out at piece. It's quite long, but it ha it's packed with recipes. So it's like, hey, you got canned chicken? You got rotisserie chicken? This is what you can make with that chicken. You got canned salmon or tuna? This is what you can make with that. You see it getting thicker. If you've got butter, cream, allulose, <laughs> xylitol, a pinch actually, of salt. Actually, this recipe is not on Diet Doctor, but we did include some treats. Some really simple, easy treats um, for people who are stuck at home. So anyway, so go to Diet Doctor. I'll post some of those links because that may help you. Um, and stay active in the group. You know, I think one of the biggest challenges of this is connecting with people. And we're there. We're there in the Diet Doctor group, the Diet Doctor members, and my low curve journey group. We're there. Like, lean on us. Because guys, you know, we're going through the same kind of challenges here, but we're staying pretty strictly on plan. Well, it'd be hard to go plan in this house. <laughs> there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing to eat. Plan. So, Except that Jonathan does like some, well, yeah, you can see the apples, apples. behind yeah, it. Yeah, Jonathan so. eats apples and peanut butter. They're the small apples. I mean, we can't outweigh them. And they're about 25 carbs, but he's more low carb than keto, and he can handle it. He's doing great with it. So this is really getting thick. The color is just so right now. But you've got this color, right? And then you've got, I hope you guys can see it. You've got this can you color. <laughs> can they see it? I can't tell. I can't tell because the comments are covering it up. But anyway, it's almost getting there. Almost getting there. Um, the other thing I'm doing for Diet Doctor is working on a, a recipe collection for Easter. So that's kind of a fun thing. I'll finish that up, I think, this week. And it'll be out in time for Easter, which is April something. Something. Um, and maybe an interesting Easter note. Um, Easter bonnets, no new frocks. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing? I'm gonna let this over a few more minutes, but how are you guys doing staying at home? Like I said, it's been a bit of a challenge if you've been reading my post, kind of getting into this new normal. We're very blessed, we're staying in, but, um, but yeah, a lot of cooking. They, they can see the color they can see good, good, good. when you turned it last time. I keep shoving it in everybody's face. <laughs> No, does no, this, you're only shoving it in my this, face. <laughs> does this um, help anybody? <laughs> Here. Mm. He's going to have to wash all these spoons. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's almost done. Mm. I'm going to add in, yeah, it's really, really close to done. Again, it's not quite as dark as this guy, but it's getting there. Um, Heather says to work. Is anybody mm. making this with me? Oh, they're still working out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Those of you working in healthcare, thank you for all you do. What? Is there a question? Um, can I have another spoonful? No. <laughs> this is why I have to take, and see the germs are killing me, killing me here. And so Erica I, Lynn, I'm the one that does the dishes at our house, and I'm tired of them too, so I really do sympathize with your son who does your dishes. <laughs> When we got married, um, it was <laughs> I'll cook, you clean, right? That was the deal. It's pretty easy at the time. Little did he know. It's <laughs> 18 years later. Um, you know, Crystal Poland's kids do that. Her, her son cleans the kitchen. Crystal Poland is one of our DD moderators. She works at Diet Doctor with me, too. And yeah, her kids like have awesome chores. So maybe we should be better parents. <laughs> Maybe we should. Ooh, look at that Yeah, spoon. the color it's, is... See how it's thickening up? It used to be really thin like broth. And look at that. It's like still... Ooh, look at that. Dripping like that. Can you tell I'm having fun making this? <laughs> I'm having fun watching her make it. Because <laughs> he knows it's not leaving the house. <laughs> but anyway, that's about it. I'm going to add in the sweeteners. I could let it go. I mean, seriously, I could let it go until the spoon nearly stands not quite. Um, and then it'll just be, it'll be that much thicker when it cools. Chris, Crystal says, Biz and she cooks, Max cleans, and Captain Kirk, well, 
just he eats. just enjoys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how'd he get that lucky? <laughs> hmm. I tried to train Crystal. I told her I'd send her the kids because she like Crystal's like this magician, awesome like homeschool mom, and she has her kids like on a schedule. And actually, her kids do it themselves. Like over the years, her kids have put themselves on a schedule. So last week when I was like, you know, getting constant mom, can I mom, can I? Um, from the kids while I was trying to work, I was like, I'm sending them to your house. Will you send Kirk to my house? Because Kirk is a photographer, and he mm -hmm. and I could do like the food photos, and she wouldn't trade. Hmm. Um, Sandy wants to know, oh, well, no, it was Wendy wants to know, can you add some glucomon in to thicken it up? Um, I don't think you want to, because remember, it will thicken when it cools. But the longer it simmers, the richer it becomes. It browns. It's still it's caramelizing essentially, and so the more the longer it goes, it's going to naturally thicken. If you put glucomon in, you risk it having that grainy texture. So I don't think you need to add any conditioners at all. I mean, it's got an amazing mouthfeel. Uh oh, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, when it's that thick, it sure does. I mean, when you know, when my 13-year-old carbivore says tastes like caramel, I think that's good enough for me. Yeah, this is really getting nice and thick. It is still bubbly on top, but that's okay. You can stir out some of the bubbles. Look at that, y'all. <sighs> can you see? <laughs> it's mad at you. This thing, and I'm not going to go, like, you're going to go back, but you're going to go back in the box. Yeah, <laughs> he's a boy because he's so hungry. So, yeah, that's really about done. I'm going to go ahead and put the, normally I'd take it off the heat, but I'm going to add it. I'm going to add the extracts in here. I can't read the comments. I think I'll make something. I think I'll make a chocolate mud cake. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Ooh, make the mud pie brownies and pour this over the mud pie brownies. Uh. What I found is that you can pour it over a cold dessert, but if you pour it in something and bake with it, it tends to disappear. It tends to get absorbed into it. I tried to make this pumpkin marshmallow fluff Mm -hmm. Caramel, yeah, David didn't love it. Um, and, but I have also made this. I'm putting half teaspoon each of maple extract, totally optional on the maple, and then a half teaspoon of vanilla. If you're not going to use the, um, if you're not going to use the maple, caramel. If you're not going to use the maple, just use a teaspoon of vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, when it cools, I would pour it on a finished. I've had good luck pouring it on a finished um, dessert, but yeah. I haven't had good luck baking with it. Yeah, someone was asking about putting it in a cheesecake, and I I, I wouldn't recommend, based on my experience, <laughs> extensive as it is, I wouldn't put it in the cheesecake. I'd it put it on top of the cheesecake. Look at that, y'all. And you can see how thick it is already. This will be even thicker when it cools. So now so you've turned the heat off? I've turned the heat off. Can you see? Yeah, look at that. See? And so it'll thicken up even more as it, it cools. It will thicken even more as it cools. In fact, that may cool down a bit as we're talking. So I've turned this off. Can you it? Yeah, it will. Can you it? Will I? Okay. Yes, because it's trying to cool. Okay. Look at that, y'all. Can you see the, I don't know if they can see the color or not. Oopsie. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's a nice golden color. Honestly, I don't it, know. It looks like the caramel squares. I mean, yeah, the Werther's or whatever. Yeah, it's not quite as dark as this, so I might have some of this longer. Um, <laughs> use your timer and you'll find out kind of the perfect. For me, I think it's 18 to 21 minutes is perfect. And the recipe, I wrote 15 to 18 minutes because then you, it's going to be... You've probably been cooking it for a good 30 minutes. but you kidding. Well, no. it took a while. But but you you're not really familiar with your little yeah this new hot toy. plate. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I hope that if you guys make the candle for your family, that you'll enjoy it too. Let it cool, set it in the fridge, put it in your little jars or whatever container you're going to put it in. Uh, glass is better than plastic for warming it up, and that's it. All right, and the recipe will be on. The recipe will be on cooking keto with Christy. Check out the Diet Doctor resources. You can do Diet Doctor Christy Sold and see what I write. Um, wrote a story about my grandparents this week. If you didn't get to see that one, go look that up. 
and just I, Dr. Coronavirus, will bring up all the things that we have on resources on coronavirus. And I'll be keeping you abreast of our veggies and how they're growing and what we've made with the broccoli and the cabbage and the tomatoes and the peppers and the basil. If any of it survives the rabbits and the deer and the <laughs> birds and the squirrels. If you have any tips for keeping their critters out of the garden, we live in the city limits, but we have all kinds of critters and yeah. Anyway, it's already right. like how thick it is and I even drip them. Oh, anyway, you guys enjoy. Let me know how it works for you. I think Lance has the ice cream ready. Lance has ice cream ready. Well, it has to cool a lot for that. <laughs> <laughs> that may be tomorrow night. So David's going to turn the um, off, and we'll um, and I'll post it, and we'll Bye, see you next Sunday. You're going to have to walk.